into the developer's pocket. So all it is, all we are, all this borough is, is a money-making borough. That's why we have shelters coming in. Who's making money in the shelters? Okay, yeah, we do need shelters. And we do need affordable housing. The guys who but, shelters, they get contracts from the city. Exactly. That's another thing. And they get hefty contact, not contracts, not just contracts. They get hefty, hefty contracts. Monetary. Okay, that's another issue. So, Bronx is changing. It really is yeah. changing. It's changing a lot. I mean, a woman can't walk around anymore one o'clock in the morning. Not around here, you can't. You can't. It's just not safe. Because I wouldn't walk around here one o'clock in the morning by myself. No, I wouldn't even drive around here one o'clock in the morning by myself. Um, it seems like a lot of. Um graffiti taggers who got into tagging are like relatively young kids. Do you have any idea of like how that can be stopped? Like how to stop young kids from getting into graffiti? I think a lot of times our taggers are tagging because that's their way of relieving frustration. Mm -hmm. It's frustration, it's peer pressure, now you have some talented taggers out there, but what we need to do as community leaders is give them the tools, positive tools, so they can redirect their tagging, their negative tagging, and put it into positive tagging. You know, display their artwork in the Bronx Museum. Put it on paper, not on Right. Offer them a job to put on perfect example. MTA. MTA has a lot of properties, right? And all you see is just wish washing paint. It doesn't even match up. I mean, it looks so disgusting. The underpass. The underpath. When I drive to Community Board 7, that underpath right there, if you put money aside, and say, listen, instead of you tagging this property up with graffiti, we'll give you X amount of money if you can put a beautiful artwork on these two walls here. Okay? And then put their names on it. Make them feel like they're part of the community. Because we have a lot of talented young, young people here in the Bronx. But I don't feel that they're given the right tools. I don't feel that they're given an opportunity. I don't feel that they're given love and the recognition to say, let's turn this negative, let's turn it into a positive. Let's do something great and recognize them. Have an award ceremony. So this way the world will get around. You know what, man? Let's not, let's not poke a feet in that property more. There's this organization that we can make money we can, we can paint the graffiti, you know, off of this property, and then we can put up our artwork on this property, and then his friend will say, yeah, I'll make some money. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll, okay, okay, I'll do it, because then I can buy myself a pair of sneakers. Because my mom right now, she's in the shelter, and she can't afford to give me any money for sneakers. But if I do this artwork for this organization, I could buy my pair of, could buy my pair of Jordans. Give our young people an incentive. Go into our schools. Also, what we need to do, too, is reach out to these entertainers. They have a lot of money, and they spend the money, and I'm going to say it again, on garbage. Take that money and put it into an art program, okay? That's what the Bronx Board President needs to do and our elected officials. Ask the entertainers. Say, listen, we need help. We need help to get our young people off the streets, off of drugs. We have a lot of kids right now that are in foster care. Very talented young men and women. They can sit right now, Latasha, and look at you and draw you like in 15 minutes tops. And you're like amazed that they did that. You're like, you just did that? Yeah. 
And he's been in foster care since he was six years old and now he's 17. And this was a teenager that used to tag, but also has a gift mm -hmm. that he can draw. It's like unbelievable. Take that, foster teen. Give him a job. Give him an incentive. Work with him and nurture him. Because that teen will turn out to be a well-productive member of society if he's given the right tools to do it and if he's given an opportunity to do it. Yeah. Are there any organizations like that, like what you described, that are doing any of this now? Or is no one really... Uh, Tats Crew. Tats Crew. Oh, they're talented. I, I as a matter of fact, they're on my website. Very, very talented. Very talented. There's one group that we know of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they work with kids, right? Yeah. yeah. I believe so. I haven't really They have their own office down, down in the South Bronx or something. They got their own yeah, office. I interviewed them last week. They have a oh, of really? Yeah. Nice, nice. You see? So here it is. We have a positive, an organization who's really trying to make a difference and who's working with young people. Mm -hmm. well, maybe we'll reach out to them and see if we can work together as a team. Because, you know, at this point, Mr. Tasha, my goal is to make a fight for our children here in the Bronx. You know, I mean, I see them every day and I hear stories. And it breaks my heart to know that a lot of our kids, there's a lot of issues going on with them at home. And we have a lot of teens right now that are homeless. And they're tagging because their home life is just... In disarray. They don't do it because they want to be vindictive and malicious. They do it because it's just a way of just relieving their frustration. And they're angry because they're in a predicament that they're in. That's why they do it. And back back in the 70s, one the first time I ever saw graffiti, you know, on a, on a, a mural style. Was a, done by a guy called uh, Wild Style, Wild Style, mm -hmm. and he has a uh, three, I believe, three uh, murals that are stew up on 195th Street and uh, Jerome Avenue. Like that. And then I don't know, but I, when you take a, a bus up to Broadway, I think under the, the five train, or the two, I forget what is that, the two or the one. He has a pizzeria up there. There's a pizzeria up there with his artwork on it. Okay. Yeah, so he was, he was, you know, he was famous and talented. He was getting paid for that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And Stew Up. That's the amazing thing is that stuff is Stew Up. Yeah. You go, if you, if, I don't know if you're driving or you're walking, if you go down 195th, you'll see the, the artwork. And then uh, on uh, Kingsbridge Road, and uh, I think uh, Crescent, Crescent Avenue, Avenue there, there's a mural of uh, Charles Bronson. Okay. You know? And he wrote, he wrote some kind of quote or something. I don't remember. But yeah, it's right there. It's near the Kentucky, uh, the Kennedy Fried Chicken, across oh, okay. the street. That's still there. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Do you think that putting up more murals could be a way to stop people from tagging and bombing on the walls? There'll be some who, yeah, they'll stop. There's always going to be a percentage of people who are going to continue doing something. Yeah. Or, for, or a percentage of people who are going to follow that way. You know, it's like, uh, you know, you say, uh, you know, like, I believe we're rap, rap is rap is about 40 years old now, you know, mm -hmm. but it's still around the same way uh, heavy metal is, you know, and that's 60, uh, that's about 60, like uh, Woodstock and stuff. So yeah, some things, some things you figure, you know, wouldn't they grow out of that? You know, we're gonna slag, we're gonna save your pants. Certain things I wonder, you know, how do you, you know? And then other things they, they uh, you know. They tell me you can't do that. And it was like my second, my dad, my the thirteen year olds. Like I'll, I'll draw the the backpack one one uh, 
one hand all over my arm, the other one all, you know, just one hand, one strap. And they'll be saying, no, oh, Daddy, you can't do that like that. You gotta put it on both, with both straps. And I looked at them and I said, yeah, but this is cool. We're doing this, it was cool the way we did it. You know, but it's funny. try to come up with their own stuff. And sometimes they, they really do. They really do. They do like, you know, like the artwork and their stuff. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like that's what, I mean, I've, I've been talking to a lot of people who used to bomb the subway cars in the 70s and 80s, and now they don't do that anymore. They work on murals, and they're so talented. Like, it's incredible to yeah. see. Like, you know, for example, Pat Screw, like, all the stuff that they do now. One of the amazing things was I was waiting for the four train and this kid did a a tag but it was the Silver Surfer oh. <laughs> riding the subway on his on his board, the surfboard. And I looked at that and I was like, damn that's good. <laughs> and that was on the subway? That was on the train. Oh, wow. <laughs> Riding by on the train. <laughs> Those were one of, the, one of the amazing things I looked at and saw was yeah. that train. <laughs> that thing was on. But they, they got tougher now. Uh, the MTA really got tougher. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they rebuilt, they made the fences smaller. You can't put your feet through them to climb over. And they do it. They got double rim barbed wire. Yeah. Where the, where the, you know, the train yards are. So. You rarely can see, you rarely see graffiti. Yeah. Um, do you ever uh, work with or interact with the like um, NYPD Vandal Squad at all? Or do you think that they're, whatever they're doing is effective? I like the fact that, you know, they, they, the kids got to, they don't draw them in jail, but they, they, make, they, they, make, they make them show up to remove the graffiti. Okay. The real graffiti and stuff. Instead of doing time, so you know, as long as they don't go on their record or stuff, I'm like, yeah, well, you know, you know, that's a better way of paying than sitting in jail, yeah. and learning worse stuff. Yeah. But there, do you, like there is a vandal squad in the Bronx, right? Sure is. Must be. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and each precinct must have its own little, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they both they have the. The cadets, okay. and then there's the the cadets, and then they have the other guys. Uh, wow, what do they call? Auxiliary, the auxiliary police. Okay. They do everything but carry a gun. They they do they come out and they do they do the paint overs on blocks and stuff. You know, if the group's gonna do something in the neighborhood and they call them up at the precinct. They'll supply, you know, put them on protection or collect. But they, you know, they will come out with people. With it. You guys, you guys will come out with, uh, you know, wearing, you know, used clothes and stuff to help out. Okay. And who are, who are most of your clients? Like, what are they? Um, building owners or basically anybody? You know, I, I can I can pers persuade to, to allow us to do it. Okay. You know. So far, it's only been like this one, uh, uh, a couple, yeah, a couple of garage owners and stuff, you know, okay. like homeowners and stuff. I have a way different, you know, price range than uh, a developer or mm -hmm. something. Cause, you know, it's hard for them to, you know, they gotta paint their garages, you know, they're paying, they're paying a mortgage and stuff, and then the garage is always tagged. Yeah, like garage doors. Yeah, garage doors are their white, they tag them off and then, you know, some of the red ones are tagged up, you know. So, we try to match the color. Okay. You know, so, we try to do, you know, if you're out, if I'm out and around and I know I'm going to be in a certain area, then I'll be checking on that property if I, okay. I painted it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so you were saying that, like, it seems like, I mean, like, you've um, brought this issue to a lot of, lo like, local Bronx politicians, and they just don't get back to you. 
Do you think they just they like don't care, or they don't think that the issue's ever going to be fixed? So why bother? Do you have any idea why? They don't really so care because a lot of the um. They just want to supply the paint to volunteers. And let them paint right, and they get money in the budget. They get money in the budget for graffiti removal. Okay. But I just feel that a lot of the politicians are friends with the developers and they don't want to make any waves, so to speak. Okay? This is all a political game that the politicians have with the developers. Okay? They're all friends. They go out to eat. They play golf together. Well, so they donate the money to them. So you know. And that's fine. But I just feel, like I had mentioned to you before, if I'm double parked, which I was last year, I did an event last year at Gasolina, got a $125 ticket. I had to run into a store to get a mirror for my dressing room. I had to pay that. So if I'm double parked, I get a ticket. If I don't move my car at a certain time, I get a ticket. So why are these developers allowed to come in our neighborhoods and leave their property undeveloped, filled with graffiti and garbage, and they don't get ticketed? Now, I emailed Chuck Schumer, and I'm waiting for Chuck to get back in touch with me. Now, granted, I know there was a lot of things going on and so on and so forth. I get that. I even emailed Several different politicians. Andrew Cohen. I emailed his office. He knows who we are. When I see him at political events, he'll tell me, oh, call my office, set up an appointment. You call his office? You won't get an appointment with him unless he wants to meet with you. See, the politicians pick and choose who they want to sit down with. Okay? That's what it boils down to. They pick and they choose. Any, many, money, mo. If you're not mo, and if you're not in their clique, so to speak, you'll never hear from them. Mark Jonah is one of them. I went to his office, seen him at a lot of political events. Oh, call my office. Call his office. Went to his office. Falls on deaf ears. Okay? And I've gotten to the point now I'm not even going to waste my time reaching out to politicians anymore. Because as far as I'm concerned, they're all full of it. Okay? Now, the only one that I'm going to stand here and say I really actually like, and I told him when he was running for the borough president, for the mayor, I told him, I said, you know, Mayor de Blasio, you're going to be our next mayor because I'm a psychic. And he says, really? I said, yeah, you are. And he won. Okay? But with that being said... I pick and choose who I'm going to vote for as well. If I don't feel that you're really going to make a difference for our children of the Bronx, I'm not going to vote for you. I won't even speak to them when I see them at political events. Because half of the politicians walk around with their nose up high like they, they're better than you. That's their attitude. I always speak to them. That's you. I'm not going to be a hypocrite. Because if I don't like you, I'm not going to give you the opportunity no, to I, hear me say hi. Hi would not come out of my mouth. No, I can see it in their face. It says, oh, here he comes again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would just look at them and say to myself, no, okay, here he goes. The same old, same old speech. So got to wait and see what happens. Do you feel like... Um in terms of like New York City and the five boroughs, a lot of times the Bronx gets left over or it always does. ignored. It always does. It's a dumping ground. Okay, I don't hear it may anyone... Maybe equal to Staten Island, but yeah, it gets dumped on. It's, yeah. The Doe Foundation, the Stack Foundation, they just want to come into our community and just dump their caterpillar the caterpillar, the big, huge construction caterpillar, the one that digs up the dirt, they'll leave it on the property for months at a time. 
They'll just leave the property unattended. I don't know what they're going to build at 150 Cortland, but I know at the Webster Avenue property that the Stag Group owns, they're having a lot of issues right now. Citation. Okay, a lot of citations. So that right there should tell you who they are and what they are. Okay, and what's to come in our neighborhood. I need, to, I need to, like three things people know the Bronx for the Bronx, the Yankees, mm -hmm. the Botanical Gardens, and the King's Bridge Armory, and uh, no, 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 the Bronx Zoo. Oh, yeah, the, the Bronx Zoo. That, you know, That's true, yeah. Thing, that's, right, you know. oh. that's all they know. So they figure the Bronx is a zoo. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I thought it was back in the days. The politicians, all they, they rebuilt the Yankee Stadium uh, MTA station, 161st. Twice, I lived through a, a, re, a referral of that, that station. Mm -hmm. And they have yet to, you go down on, on the D, D train on 20, 205th Street, they have yet to even touch that station. Oh, yeah, that's a that, that station leaks. They got leaks all in there. You got to go down there with a mask, okay? A hazmat mask on, literally, because it stinks, and it's so depressing. But if the 205th Street Station was at the 161st Street Station, I get you, I bet you, I guarantee you will be fixed up. Even the Kingsbridge Armory, they're going to be fixed up that Kingsbridge uh, Station because once that ice skating ring comes into play, you're gonna see a whole new Kingsbridge station. Okay, you're so the yeah, it's all about money when it comes to these politicians. If you come into the Bronx and you're the highest bidder, and you say I'm gonna bid 1.5 mil to buy that property, or I'm gonna come into the Bronx. To build an affordable housing and you have the right talk and you have the right dollars in your pocket you can get in in this neighborhood but like i said once again you cannot go to the country club section of the bronx or city island i have never heard i might be wrong now i have never heard of a shelter being built in city island have you have you mr taja okay there you go all right I've never heard of a shelter going into the country club section of the Bronx. Have you? No. There you go. Certain parts of the Bronx, they would not allow a shelter. Are you kidding me? A shelter? It would not happen. Because a community board in that neck of the woods, you wouldn't even see one speck of graffiti. You wouldn't even see one speck of garbage in that neck of the woods. Because those registered voters, they will protest Ruben Diaz's office to the point where Ruben will be like, you know what, let me call sanitation. Let me call the mayor's office. Matter of fact, they will call the mayor's office themselves. They have the mayor's office on speed dial. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a, those they, people... They, they go out every morning, they see something, they write it down, that's right. and then they call 311. And of that's right. Them, and then things get, and that's why people things happen. Because they don't, they don't there's three that. other people behind them writing mm -hmm. the same stuff down. Mm -hmm. No, And, you know, they have good jobs. They have a little money to back them up. So because of that, they get things done. But it doesn't mean that because you have money, you have prestige, that you just dump on our children. See, I'm advocating for our children. I'm advocating for our black and Hispanic children. So many to advocate for them. And I'm an advocate. I've always been an advocate for children. In 1998, we had a street fair for a little girl. She was killed by her mother, her grandmother. Her name is Amy Bernie. That's also in the article that I've given you. So I've always been a child care advocate. And now, when I drive around, I'm seeing more and more properties are so disgusting and graffiti, and I'm saying, wow. Then when I drive into other neighborhoods, like the country club section of the Bronx, City Island, Throg's Neck, I'm like, whoa, it's, this is the Bronx? It's a whole different world. 
Even Riverdale now is also being tagged as well. Oh, yeah, I have an article about Riverdale as well. You contact Riverdale Press. But no more Cohen. Cohen must have cleaned that up already. Andrew Cohen. Andrew Cohen. Yes. Yes. He has a strong supporters from Riverdale. Strong voters from Riverdale. And right now, what would you say is like the worst um, area for graffiti? Like, where is the most graffiti up? In this section. This section going all the way to the northern section of the Bronx. Okay. Yeah. The Kingsbridge going all the way to the northern section. Webster Avenue, mm -hmm. 198th, Webster, uh, 205th Street, and Bainbridge. This one property that we painted for free. It's a bodega to the corner. It's disgusting. It's right up the block from um, the church, St. Brendan's Church and School. Disgusting. Oh, that wall. That wall is you disgusting. See it, now. Oh. it looks worse. No. And when Sipion Devout went out and painted it that day, the, the manager or the owner of the deli didn't even offer them something to drink. I mean, they had their own juice and water, but I'm just saying. It's just. You know, people are not friendly like they should be. People don't wake up and say good morning and good afternoon. They don't hold the doors for the ladies. They don't make good men anymore. Like, all the good men are either married or gay or six feet under. And people are just so rude and, and inconsiderate. And in prison. And in prison, well, they're good men. No, no, no. I'm not even going to put them in the mix. If they were good men, their butts wouldn't even be in prison. So let's just keep them out of it. Okay? But I'm just saying, though, the quality of life, it's just, it's depressing. As I'm coming into the building with the vow, you know, we had our bags and everything, and this gentleman walked in. Now, he saw us. He would have thought he would have held the door. No, he didn't. So I opened the door with my key. There was a woman that was coming out. I held the door for her. And I said, good morning. And she said, good morning. She said, thank you. I said, you're welcome. People don't say good morning and thank you anymore as much as they should. They don't even ask you, well, how was your day? How was your weekend? You know, it just takes one or two words of kindness to make a difference. Won't you agree with me, Mrs. Tasha? Yeah. Yeah, just one or two words, but just mm -hmm. thank you. Like, I thank you for coming out today. So what made you decide to come out and interview us today? Was there a particular reason? So I'm just, I, I have wanted to write a piece about the Bronx because I feel like it often gets left over, and I had done a lot of reporting before um, okay. at the Norwood News. And you know, like all the major newspapers, like New York Times, New York Post, like all the Bronx oh. heroes have shut down, he like here, like they don't have reporters in the Bronx. Really? And so I was looking for a story, and I kept on seeing the graffiti, so I wanted to know what what the deal was. So I found you guys through the Norwood News um, so the, article. The Daily News don't have the the, the Bronx section in it no more. Yeah, no, they don't. Really? Yeah. I remember that. They remember wow. The so they've all been shut down. That's um, terrible. Is there a particular reason why it's due to it's um it's just money like money. There's not yeah. a lot of money in newspapers. Wow, that's amazing. That's now let me ask you, what about the media? Do you work with a, a television outlet as well? I don't know. Okay, do you have I colleagues? Do, I um I write, but I do have a lot of colleagues who are doing uh video like doc journalism and broadcast. Okay, can you pass our information yeah. on to them? Because I think that we need to shed a spotlight on this epidemic here in the Bronx and in all the boroughs. Because it's not just in the Bronx, it's graffiti, it's graffiti in all the boroughs. Mm -hmm. But I'm just noticing that there's nothing being really being done mm -hmm. by the politicians. And I think that if more people know about what is happening because i'm sure you have a lot of people who say this is this this is disgusting this is depressing if more people knew that we were fighting 
they will say, you know what? I agree with you. What can I do? You know, I've got friends in Albany because my next step is to go to Albany, the contact representative in Albany, and see if I can put political pressure there because I'm not getting any help from any of our local officials Council. here yeah. in the Bronx at all. We even emailed Manhattan and they responded back and said, we've got your email, but they represent Manhattan. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, if you can be so kind and give your our information to your colleagues, I would really appreciate that. Yeah, definitely will. I have a lot of um, people that I know that are working in like video. Okay. And stuff, and they're always looking for stories. So. Okay. Yeah, um, that will be. There's a show called The Get Down. Mm -hmm. Now I didn't know about the show until my son actually. Said, Mom, you want to see the get down? I said, What's that? I'm thinking it's like a dancing kind of show, but it was a show about the Bronx, about hip hop and graffiti, and it was quite interesting. So I'm actually waiting for the new season to come back on Netflix. So that's one of the reasons why I'm asking you if you have colleagues that work within the television, because I think that the way that we can let other people people know about the epidemic and what we're facing right now is through media. It's good no news covered it on paper. But I think it needs to be on television. I think a spotlight needs to be because if a spotlight is on what is happening to us in the Bronx, I'm sure other boroughs are going to say, you know, we have the same problem here and no one is doing anything about it. If I get together with the Greenos and we can all do something. If I get... A thousand people to say, you know what, I don't like the graffiti, what can I do? Then the politicians will have to listen. You get it? Yeah. See, we're the only ones complaining about it. But if I have, let's say, a thousand people putting pressure on the political leaders and saying, we don't want this anymore, put pressure, give the property owners a citation, I think that the politicians will wake up now and say, you know what, uh-oh, we got to do something because now we got a thousand people now calling our office, mm -hmm. complaining. They're writing letters. They're protesting in front of our office. We got to do something. Then they'll listen. They're not listening now because it's just us. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, those are all the questions I have. Well, thank, thank you, you so we much. You. And thank you for all this information. Thank you so have much. Have a happy for... Thanksgiving. Yes, have a great Thanksgiving. And pass information on to your, yeah, to your colleagues as well. Pass yeah. them on.